Hi, it's ChemGal. In the last video, we introduced you to oxidation and reduction reactions. This video will discuss how we can reduce alkynes to alkenes and further to alkenes. Now we're going to focus specifically on reduction. Here we have an alkyne, an alkene, and an alkane. An alkyne is a carbon structure that has a triple bond. An alkene is a carbon structure that has a double bond. And an alkane is a carbon structure with all single bonds. And you might be wondering why this alkyne is drawn in a straight line. And that's because it's sp hybridized. So real quickly, if we were to draw out, it would look like this. Where these two carbons here correspond to these two carbons. So this carbon has a triple bond over here and a single bond over here. And that makes sense because carbon can only have four bonds. And we know that atoms like to keep the most amount of space in between their bonds. So it would try to maximize the amount of space in between this bond and this bond, which is why we don't see this structure as bent. So we would not put triple bonds like this because that would put the triple bond in close proximity to the single bond. And we know that they would like to stay as far away from each other as possible. And that means having a 180 degree distance between them. So that's why they become linear. And that's why we draw alkynes as linear structures. So how do we know that this is reduction? Well, if we pay attention to the molecular formulas, we see that each time we go to the right, we are gaining in hydrogen. So we went from having six hydrogens to eight hydrogens to 10 hydrogens. And we know that an increase in hydrogens means that we are reducing our structure. Another way of thinking about it is reducing the amount of bonds. So we are reducing from a triple bond to a double bond and from a double bond to a single bond. Now let's talk about some of the reagents that we can use to perform these reactions. So if we want to go from the alkene to the alkane, we can use something called catalytic hydrogenation. And to do this, we would be using a metal catalyst. So you might see them using palladium, platinum, or nickel. And what you're going to do is you're going to add one of these metal catalysts, such as palladium, with H2. And that's going to supply hydrogens to the compound and allow that double bond in the middle to break. So originally, these carbons in the middle were CHCH, but now they're going to become CH2CH2. And that's because they have an influx of hydrogens coming in from this reagent. And so we call this catalytic hydrogenation. So as I said before, you might see palladium here, or you might see platinum, or even nickel. And usually they're going to draw the metal under the arrow with the hydrogen above the arrow. Catalytic hydrogenation is so effective that it can even be used to turn an alkyne into an alkane. So over here, we can perform catalytic hydrogenation as well and turn this alkyne into an alkane. Now you might be wondering what we can use to turn an alkyne into an alkene. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on that reaction so we can take a better look. Now this gets a little more complicated because we know that double bonds or alkene structures have something called stereoisomerism, which means that these double bonds can either be trans, as in this case, or cis, as in this case. And we would use different reagents to produce each of these. To reduce an alkyne to a trans alkene, we would use something called NaNH3 liquid. This over here is a cursive L that indicates that the NH3 is going to be in a liquid state, which is pretty important. 
And so this would turn our alkyne into a transalkene. If we want to turn our alkyne to a cis alkene, we would use something called Lindlar's catalyst. And the mnemonic that I make to remember that is Lindlar's catalyst cis. So it kind of rolls off the tongue and makes it a little easier to remember. And one more thing that I want to point out to you is that when we reduce this alkyne, we kept the amount of carbons the same. So this alkyne has four carbons. Remember that each point represents a carbon. And so each of these structures have four carbons as well. And we have to make sure that when we reduce our structures, we do not gain or lose any carbons or else our answers will be marked wrong. Now it's time to test yourself. Take a moment to pause the video and fill in the missing sets of reagents and products to complete this reaction pathway. And there you have it. Remember that we need to keep the amount of carbons the same. So a quick tip you can do is notice that there's two carbons branching off of our cyclopentane ring. And so that means that when we draw our alkyne, there should only be two carbons branching off here as well. Additionally, we used palladium here, but you could have also used platinum or nickel. Last but not least, you want to keep in mind the direction of the arrows. Because the arrow is pointing this way, the question is asking you, what did we add to NaNH3 in order to get this reagent, not the other way around? So that's it for this video. If you liked it, please leave a thumbs up and feel free to subscribe. Happy studying.